As we continue with RF and radio frequency, it's time to continue our study of these signals and look at some of their characteristics such as amplitude and phase. So let's jump in. So we're actually starting off with attenuation and we've talked about this previously. So attenuation is as the life cycle of a waveform goes on, it slowly loses power. And it does so because it runs into things and it deals with resistance in the atmosphere. And as it ages, it attenuates or loses power. Now, if I was to take a look at this uh, signal on something like an oscilloscope and measure the power, I would see that on the screen, the signal is getting smaller and smaller. Now over here on the side, I would have some kind of power rating over here, and I would see that this signal at its beginning is strong in power, and it begins to lose power and get smaller as it ages. And that, again, is attenuation, and it's because of resistance in the atmosphere and things that it runs into. Now, moving on, we have frequency, which we've talked about, measured in hertz. And again, this is the cycles per second, or number of wave complete waveforms in one second, number of cycles of waveforms. And we're concentrating specifically in the wireless network area in this course, but you should understand that this is the RF spectrum here, and that there are lots of different frequencies within the RF spectrum, and those are the frequency. And in order to uh, transmit and receive a signal, so if we have a transmitter over here, and it's transmitting at 2.4 gigahertz, in order to receive that signal, we would need a receiver that is also uh, listening at 2.4 gigahertz. So we need to listen at the same frequency as we're transmitting. So it's like if I'm speaking French to you and you don't speak French, well, you're not gonna understand my message. The same thing applies in frequencies and radio signals. It comes down to the frequencies and you have to tune into the right frequency. Just like when you were a kid and you played with walkie talkies and before you started, you're like, hey, I'm on channel 12 and you'd have to set your walkie talkie to channel 12 so that you could hear uh, the person you're playing with when they talk across the walkie talkies, which are always fun. Then we move on to amplitude. Now, amplitude is the size of the waveform. Now, we're not talking about meters. We're not talking about wavelength. Not today. Right now, we're talking about the size, so the height of the waveform. And that's because the bigger the waveform, the more power we have in it. So if we were to measure this, it would be able to provide us with a power rating. So when we have a transmitter over here that's transmitting a signal out of it, uh, well, it's transmitting at a given amplitude or a given power. And the same thing on a receiver. When we have a receiver receiving a signal, so the signal comes all the way over and is received by the receiver over here, then we have a received amplitude or received power. And remember, we talked about attenuation a minute ago because when we measured, we, we used the example of an oscilloscope and we were measuring the strength of a signal and when it started out, it was strong and it started to slowly attenuate. Well, as you see here, it's losing power and that is where the amplitude and power relate. And lastly, we have something called phase, and I find this to be absolutely amazing. Now, this is one of my favorite things about RF. Now, we have different signals, and we've talked about them. So if I show you a signal here, and it's flowing through the air, well, that is a single signal. But if I have another signal at the same frequency traveling through the air as well, well, they have a relationship if they share the same space. Now, that relationship is called phase. Now, if I have two signals, let's, let's, uh, let me get rid of those last two I drew. There we go. And let's draw a new one here. This is a single signal here. And I have another signal and it is traveling along the exact same 
frequency here, uh, the same amplitude and everything. It's, it's what we call in phase. They match up exactly. And when two signals are in phase, I like the in phase, they actually become additive and they make the signal stronger and more powerful. Think about it like this. When, when, when we reference in phase, I want you to think of a choir. Because when you hear a choir singing and all those people are in phase, they're saying the same words at the same frequencies. At the same time, it becomes a really strong voice and you hear them because they're in phase. Now, the opposite is true as well. If we have two signals that are out of phase, let's draw another one here. There we go. And I have another signal and it's a little bit out of phase. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, what happens there? Well, they actually work against each other and it reduces the signal strength. So that actually reduces the signal strength because they're interfering with each other. Think about this. Last time you were, when you go to a restaurant and it's noisy in there, you can hardly hear your own conversation. And if you try to eavesdrop on somebody on the next table over, well, you can barely hear them. You can't really make it out because there's all this noise and distraction. And that's what this is. This is out of phase. And that's exactly what you're hearing in that restaurant because they're cross talking. They're talking on top of each other. And it's just not a good thing. And here's something really interesting. When you have two signals that cross that are exactly, uh, what we say, 180 degrees out of phase, meaning they're the exact opposite phase, believe it or not, they cancel each other out. That means you have a loss of signal at that point. So what we have is 180 degrees out of phase cancels. Now, what do I mean by degrees? Well, a waveform in itself is a complete circle. So that's 360 degrees. So like this signal over here that we're looking at uh, could actually be 90 degrees out of phase, meaning that it's one quarter of a wave cycle out of phase. And it doesn't matter. If it's out of phase, it's out of phase, except when it comes to 180 degrees because then they've got cancellation. So keep that in mind as we move forward. We're going to look at some technologies that come into place like uh, MIMO that actually take advantage of this and are able to provide us with better signal strength. So in phase, out of phase, really cool stuff. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.